The most unique thing about this frame is probably that it's using arms from another frame. These are the six inch boomerang arms from the Floss 2.1. You can see that they are completely connected. They're five millimeter arms. They're very, very durable. And the reason this frame is using six inch arms, but it's only a five inch frame is because it has a fuselage, as you can see here. Because of this fuselage, you can't fit six inch props because it'll run into the fuselage. So you had to use, so I had to use six inch arms to make a five inch frame. And the only reason that I could even do this is because when I made these arms and I started experimenting with the boomerang arm, I couldn't believe the strength and durability of them. I thought, oh, I could pull this out to six inches, no problem, and it's gonna hold up really well. And that's exactly what I found out. The reason why I haven't experimented with these boomerang arms sooner is because I didn't think people were willing to pay the extra money for an arm that's actually expensive. These are not super cheap arms, but they are really, really, really durable. There are very few people that have broken these arms so far, and there will be revisions in the future if necessary to prevent the arms from breaking in the ways that people are breaking. So the next most unique thing about this frame is that the top and bottom plates are actually the same design. They are the same. It's the same exact pattern. You can see that the top has all of the mounting holes for the uh, flight controllers and all the stacks built into it as well as the bottom plate. They are the same. You need fewer parts to build this frame and we need to, we only stock those parts so it's much easier for us on the back end to order parts stock parts ship parts make the frame kits so that that's kind of become my concept going forward just to try and simplify everything that's also another reason why I'm using these arms from the floss 2.1 to make a freestyle frame lastly there is a lower brace on the bottom which you see here which I will go over in a minute but first let me go over the stack stand the standoff and everything on, on this thing so Remember, the top plate is the same as the bottom plate, so I'm just gonna use the top plate to show you these holes here. So there are many, many holes here, and starting from the front, this is the same platform and pattern as the Flowrite frame, my previous frame, and it uses the same GoPro mounts as the Flowrite frame as well. So this is a this is my hardest flown um, <laughs> style right now, and it's, it's, survived, it's survived everything I've thrown at it. It recently just fell out of a tree 50 feet up in the air. In my last video, you saw it got stuck. This I knocked it out with another quad, and it fell straight down to the ground onto concrete, and um, that's that's what happened to it. Okay, so moving on from the front, the next set of holes that you might recognize is are these two holes here. These two holes on the sides of these two screws, these these two standoff screws, are intended for forever tubes, which is what I'm holding here. The forever tube slides into them very nicely, and it's very easy to strap the forever tube with a heat shrink, strap it to the standoff, and now you have a really nice antenna tube that sticks out very nicely, and it sits just behind the GoPro so that you can flex it out of the way, and it's uh, it's totally out of the way, your battery and everything else, and actually performs really, really well. I started doing this on my um, Tooth Fairy frames, on my little micro frames a while ago, and I and I the, this is another frame where the top and bottom are the same. So the top of this frame has these two holes in the back, which I've redesigned it since then, and the version that's actually gonna be released is different than this, but these two holes are intended for that same purpose. The forever tube slips through, and it holds it right on top, out of the way of the battery, out of the way of everything else, and the range that I'm getting on my micros is unreal. So let's go a little bit further back. On the outside, you'll notice that it has two slots here. These are four battery straps, and I only put one set of slots in because it's convenient. You don't need two sets of slots. And if you've ever broken a battery strap in the field and had to weave that battery strap through two slots, you know how annoying it is. You don't need two slots. One is plenty and it's more than enough to just hold the slots and hold the straps in place while you strap the battery down and you really don't need any more. So I got rid of it. Next, you'll see that there are a bunch of little tiny holes. These are 20 by 20 millimeter stack mount patterns and there are three of them next to each other. So if you wanted to run a 20 by 20 mount stack pattern stack, you could set up three boards next to each other or you could you know, do however you want. Maybe you want two two-in-ones if they ever are made. And when I originally designed the frame, I actually made it only for 20 by 20, but then 20 by 20 boards didn't actually materialize that could actually perform well on five inch, like consistently on huge motors. So I had to add a 30 by 30 pattern as well. And so it does have one 30 by 30 pattern. It does fit an Acon board, uh, the Acon 32 bit 6S board. Over here, I've mounted the Acon board in the vertical fashion, but it does fit in the other way with the motor motor uh, solder points on the front and back. And as you can see here, I have an interesting setup here as well, which I'll go over in a second once I'm done talking about the frame. So you can fit one 30 by 30 stack with 
a 20 by 20 stack behind it and that was by design you can put your um, flight controller or your uh, vtx or any kind of 20 by 20 back here and the biggest reason why i did that is because i don't like super tight frames that are super tight built but as you might notice that this is a 20 millimeter build height which is not small but it's also not very big and you might also notice that my top plate here is actually curved it's curved quite a bit and that's because i use two nylon nuts underneath the front standoffs and i do that because there are many micro cameras that do not fit a 20 millimeter height so i added those two little nylon bolts there nylon nuts there to the kit so that if you wanted to you could raise the front standoffs and standoffs and get a little bit more wiggle room for your camera so it doesn't run into the carbon if you like hit something really hard and the camera budges which i just like having a little bit of wiggle room I didn't make the front standoffs a different height than the back standoffs because I figured that would be very confusing. You'd get them all mixed up. And something else to note, if you don't use these nylon nuts and you just put the top plate on top and screw these four screws, you will find that there's a little bit of space between the center standoffs and the top plate. This is okay. This is as a result of the lock nuts, the flanged lock nuts underneath those 15 millimeter standoffs not actually being five millimeters. They're more like 4.5 or 4.4 millimeters. So that's why you get a 0.4 to 0.6 millimeter gap between the standoffs and the top plate. This is totally okay. And there's two reasons why the top plate flexes. Number one is because to give you a little bit more room for the camera. And number two, it actually holds your screws in. This was a side effect of what I did. I noticed a lot of, a lot of time I'll fly it for weeks and weeks on end. And then I'll realize that, oh, I'm missing some screws in my top plate or, my, or the bottom plate, like underneath the frame. And so I realized after months of flying, I didn't lose any screws. And it's probably, I'm guessing here, because the, the top plate is under stress and it's actually putting pressure on the screws so that they don't untwist themselves. I'm way too lazy to use Loctite, so I don't do that. Additionally, I have included all the screws necessary for the motor mounts because I figured not many people have eight millimeter screws available and it's pretty annoying when you're trying to squeeze seven millimeter screws onto a motor that needs eight millimeter screws. So I just included those screws to, to begin with because they don't actually cost that much to include. So why not? They're yours. They're all the hardware on the frame is the hardest steel, 12.9 uh, hardness steel, and I do not recommend swapping them for aluminum or titanium. You can swap all the top plate screws and such, but I do not recommend you swap the four very long arm screws. If you use titanium or aluminum, you will shear those screws very, very quickly. Titanium is not stronger than steel. It is brittle. It cracks and breaks much easier than steel. Steel has a much higher toughness factor. And now let's get to the brace underneath. This brace is very, very specific and it has changed in design since the prototype. This was the prototype version. And the reason why I added these two rails beside this center line is so that you could strap a battery underneath. This was by Sergio's request. I figured why not? It added actually 0.8 grams to the frame, which is annoying, but it's okay. It, it doesn't really do anything for rigidity or anything. And the only reason this bottom plate even exists is to brace all the other screws. And that's because if they weren't there, if this plate wasn't there, then the screws would feel more forces in oblique directions. So with these bolts here, they're all braced against each other and the screws feel less force in this oblique direction that can snap and bend them. And all of the force or more of the force in the yaw direction or the, the X direction, whatever you want to call it. And so it's much more difficult to shear steel than it is to bend it and snap the head off. The frame is 85 grams as is. I think it's actually gonna gain a gram or a gram and a half in the future based on some of the revisions that I'm going to do to the arm ends. So really, really minor revisions. I really don't think it's gonna be an issue, but based on some of the fractures that I've seen, the four fractures that I've seen of these arms, of the prototype arms, not even these arms, I'm going to make those revisions and I'm, I'm hoping that they'll pretty much be as close to indestructible as I can get carbon within a reasonable weight limit. So the frame weight is very, very low, and that's one of the things I'm very, very proud of, because after designing so many frames, it's really tough to get an acro frame down in weight. 90 grams, 95 grams is pretty much the minimum weight. And the first time I designed this frame, the first prototype was actually 78 grams, which is crazy low. And I'm okay with 90 grams, so I added some weight to beef things up and make it more durable. Now let's discuss the flight characteristics of this frame. So I previously designed the Flowride frame and it was very close to an X, but it was more of a wide X rather than a long X, but it still had good separation between the front and back props. 
there's a number of things that I've learned through the years designing these things, and I've kind of tried to apply all of them in this frame and made, make sure that I satisfied all my requirements. I like a relatively tight frame, but if you ask many, many pilots that are very experienced, you will, they will tell you that they prefer running five inch props on a six inch sized frame. And that's because you have more separation between the front and the back props, such that when you tilt up, you get more separation from the air, the rear props get cleaner air. I've done many videos on this, you can look at them all in the, in the previous videos, I'm not gonna go over it in detail, but you want to have some degree of distance between the front and back props. Okay, so we can't actually have a super tight frame. So let's step it up to six inches. That's exactly what this is. It's using six inch arms for a five inch frame. I actually don't remember the size of the frame, but it's still a pretty tight build. It satisfies my requirements for being a small build. And uh, everything is in the description below, so you can look at that. This frame is not an X. It's a slight stretch. I think it's like 10 or 12 millimeters longer than it is wide. And again, that is by design specifically so that it's easier to go fast without much tilt. And that is the effect that you get with the separation between the front and back discs. When you have more separation, it's much easier to, to manage your forward speed because you don't need as much tilt anymore to go forward quickly. Because the rear props are receiving much more clean air. And that is exactly the effect that I man that I managed to accomplish in this frame. And that's, that's exactly why I'm so happy about this frame Aside from the weight, because it has the flight performance that I want, it's very easy to pull out of dives without much trouble and you don't get any bounce up, you don't have to deal with your pitch so much. And it's also very, very close to an X, which many freestyle pilots prefer, so you don't really feel the difference. You just get the benefits of having this separation and still have a tight package. Additionally, on top of that, it does have a very low top plate, not very low by today's standards, but very low by old time standards. The original Alien has 36 millimeter standoffs, so much higher than 20 millimeter build height. Actually, this is a 20.5 millimeter build height because of the center standoffs are a little bit lower. So the battery sits relatively low, and I recommend a 2207 or a 2208 motor on this frame. I do not recommend 2306. Even though my main fly right now is 2306 motors, I don't like them, I don't recommend them. The 2207 motors are actually great, and I've been talking to GetFPV about about the Johnny Share 2207 motors, and they don't really explain much about that motor, but it's a pretty darn amazing motor. They actually put a lot of effort into that, into that motor. The price is a little extreme, but it's a really impressive motor, but it's a different topic. We'll discuss that later, maybe. So the battery sits relatively low. The CG is very tight and very nice. The frame is relatively small, as small as I can get it while still giving me the flight characteristics that I wanted. And there's one other reason why many people prefer five inch props on a six inch frame. The frame has nothing in the middle between the props. The prop line is just at or just above the top plate. And that's also by very specific design because if you have a big hunk of mass between the props, the thrust from the props doesn't just go down, it goes out laterally as well. And all that thrust just bumps into that hunk of mass in the middle and the props now feel like they're under load and the motors have to work harder to do everything. You actually do feel that in the air. You can test this yourself just by taking your quad that's sort of like an alien and just tape the sides up. Tape it up with, with a painter's tape and fly it. You'll see that your quad is slower, it is, not, it is not as agile, it's not as responsive, and it's just not as enjoyable to fly. It's not effortless to fly your quad. So on the Flowrite frame, you may have noticed that the back is chopped off. It doesn't have a lower part of the back of the frame. It just has a top deck that extends off the back where you can strap the battery on top. This frame is smaller, like the frame dimensions are smaller. It's actually a couple millimeters longer than the long top plate on the, on the Flowrite, but the frame dimensions are narrower. These are 20 mil, 27 millimeter standoff width, which by the way, if you have 27 millimeter standoff TPU accessories, you can use with this frame, which are the accessories from the Tooth Fairy, and they're very good and very useful. I know uh, Brian Phillips is, has a whole slew of designs, and I'm sure he's got tons of things for 27 millimeter spacing as well, since I feel like that should be the new standard going forward because it fits micro cameras perfectly. By the way, something I forgot to mention, this frame does not fit 
mini cameras. It does not fit standard cameras. It does not fit mini cameras. It does not fit standard cameras. It does not fit mini cameras. It only fits micro cameras. And I make a very strong emphasis on that because that is the most common question that I have asked of all my frames. Does it fit a mini camera? No, it does not fit a mini camera. Don't try, don't even bother. Don't get this frame if you're gonna use a mini camera. I'm sorry, it just does not fit mini cameras. But let's not take a look at this build. This is a very special build because I think that it's probably the best layout that I've, I've tried to dream up with this frame. Uh, it's got the cap up front here, which is a really nice position for the cap. The only unfortunate part is that the ESC board is going sideways and the motors solder onto the side. So it is looking a little bit messy once I, I'm finished putting the motor wires on. But I'm actually going to use this as a test frame. So I'm going to be swapping the motors and it's really going to be nice to access, to access all the motor pads without having to take anything apart. I don't even have to take the top plate off to swap my motors out. You will notice that this is a uh, Unify MMCX, the MMCX version of the Unify. I don't know why it took them so long to come out with it. They've sent me this one months ago. It's fantastic. I hugely appreciate it. And I have a Talon flight controller in the back. This is pretty much the same thing as the Hyperlite F4 OSD. It's got all the same functionality in a 20 by 20 millimeter board. Of course, one side is not flat because you can't stack all, you can't fit all that stuff on one side of a 20, 20, 20 by 20 millimeter board. It is my favorite 20 by 20 millimeter flight controller in existence to date. I have not seen anything else that can even begin to match this board. It has all the features that I want and it has it set up exactly how I like as well. So thank you so much for Heli Nation for making that because it is excellent. And yeah, oh, one more thing. It doesn't matter that my flight controller is in the back of the quad. It doesn't care. It, it doesn't matter where it is. We don't use an accelerometer. We don't use auto level. So it doesn't matter where it is. You can mount the flight controller on a boom out the end of an arm over here. As long as it's moving with the frame, it's fine. One thing that I have yet to actually figure out if this is gonna be okay is that the wires I have for my camera wire, for the actual camera signal line, as well as the VTX line are relatively long. They are going underneath everything. They go here, you can see all this bundle of wire. They go underneath everything to travel all the way to the back of the frame to plug into the flight controller. And I just did this so that I could fit the cap up in front and make it a really nice clean build. These motors, which I'm testing, are the very old Emax 2208 motors in 1500 kV. I would really like to have a 22. I would like to move to 2208 motors for my acro builds because my frames are now lighter and I can support the extra weight and I want that extra power and performance and feel of the motor. Not to mention, I won't need multiple motors for six inch or probably seven inch either. I'm going to be testing these motors on seven inch either. Uh, thank you so much for Emacs for sending me these, even though they are so old that nobody wants them. These are actually all reverse threaded prop nuts as well. So hopefully they perform as I expect and they can bring back the 22 weight stator size. That's about it. Take care. Hope this was helpful. And definitely don't forget to floss your teeth.